Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Wow, this is refreshing. I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks. Quick and cheap decor refreshers. And don't we love something simple that we can do in an afternoon or maybe in 10 minutes that just gives our house a fresh feel. Oh yeah. Quick, fun, easy. Mm -hmm. It can be hazardous though, because I did move some chairs around and I decided that I had some chairs in a place they really shouldn't be. And I just threw them up in the hallway upstairs and I was told that they were a hazard. Uh, Well, yes, Mm -hmm. a hazard. I (laughs) know. Because I hadn't had time to put them anywhere yet. Of right. Course. They were in transition. Yeah. I know. I know. So, yeah. Well, you know what this is, episode is really about in a sense is taking those blinders off and just taking a good look and shaking it up a little bit. Like you're saying about these chairs, like they just landed there. But I mean, yes, you're not going to leave chairs in your hallway. But lots of things land places and we don't really like where they are, but they're just there or something's been there for a long time. So it just stays there, you know, sometimes for 10 years. When you open up your eyes and you take those blinders off and you really start to look around, there might just be things that you need to take away or dust off or just move to a different spot. You don't have to go out and spend any more money. You don't have to buy anything new. So it it might be a lot of taking away, rearranging, and you know, and maybe you want to update a little something here and there. But we're going to give you some ideas today on quick and cheap refreshers that are really going to make an impact in your decor. Well, and it's interesting that you're talking about a lot of this has to do with simply moving things around. When I first started decorating and I found something that looked good in a room. I was afraid, Kelly, to move anything because I thought it looked so good. And I thought if I mess with this, I just can't make it look this good again. Now I'm in a position where I am moving things every week. Something is moved. And it's interesting because sometimes when I move things around, it looks better. Sometimes it looks worse. But here's, here is what does happen. Always. I always learn something. I Mm -hmm. always get a better perspective on what's working and what's not working. And here's the other beauty of it. If you take a picture of it before, take a picture of it after and then compare them. And if you've got a lot of stuff in some particular bookcase and you're afraid you're going to not like the new way you have it, take a picture of the old way so that you can put it back the way it was if you want to. But my my thought is when you move things around, you're going to like the new look. And you're going to play around with it till you do really like it. I am smiling when you're saying this because it is so true. I, you know, I it felt like I, oh, I nailed it. And it, when I first started really, really, really getting into decorating, I, my vignettes were really elaborate. You know, I'd be like, oh, this acorn is just the perfect angle. It's just and I'm just going to leave the right that. Way. That's yeah, right. so it's just like that. And then I'm going to take out my tripod and I'm going to take some photos of it. And, and I'm never going to move that because I could never possibly get that acorn in that same mm-hmm. angle. Mm-hmm. Again, and it would, you know, it would stay there the whole season and I would you know, want no one to shake the table kind of thing. And I didn't have the confidence just to be like, ah, roll that, roll on that acorn along because I know I can achieve that, a look that I will like again in a different way, at a different spot, you know, tomorrow or next week or, you know, next season or what have you. So there's the confidence level. Um, and then a, another thing to mention when we're talking about this is, I always find it amazing. I guess it's just human nature, right? You you get something and you just feel like, oh, that looks so dang good. And I just love it. And it's all working together and it's not too much. It's not too little. And the colors are working. And you step back and you're like, yes, you know, whether it be a bookshelf or what whatever it is you've created. But then at some point, you know, it's usually several months later, you're like, I am so tired of that. Or oh, exactly. I can't even believe I think that looked good. <laughs> I 
Well, and, it, and, and sometimes it's not that it looked bad, but you really need to change things around because you'll yeah. get bored with it. Right. And it may not even be that it looks better, but it's just different. Mm-hmm. And a lot of days that's worth it because I think we do get bored. If it's your house, you're there all the time, right. every day in most cases. And you want to get excited about life. You want to feel refreshed. And there's nothing refreshing, I think, about seeing the same thing all the time. You want to change things up a little bit. Yes. Yes. So this is really fun. Um, so, you know, as I was saying, uh, do you agree, Anita? A lot of it is, and I think you will, because you're the queen of giving us some empty space. Sometimes you just want to take stuff away. I would say most of the time. (laughs) Not that I'm opposed to buying things. We know that's not true. Right. Definitely. If you, so if you mm -hmm. took some things away and you gave your rooms a little more space to breathe or, you know, if your vignettes just have too many bits and bobs, try that. And then there are some other things, um, that are sort of notorious that people have a blind eye to blind eye coupled with sentimentality with this particular item. It's picture frames. Oh, and mm -hmm. oftentimes it's picture frame. Obviously there's picture frames and I would say nine times out of 10, there's people in them you love and you want to see or places you've been that you uh, enjoy or some sort of memory. Right. So that's all mixed in, but here's the thing. The picture can remain. If you've got picture frames that some are polished nickel and some are gold and is made of resin and says, you know, I love grandma or maybe it's time to unify those and decide the ones that you're going to keep, decide the pictures that you're going to keep. And maybe you put them all in frames that match. Okay, Kelly, this is dangerous territory and you know why. Why? A lot of these pictures were gifts and the frame was part of the gift. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just think about it. Because you know, grandma didn't pick out the frame that says, love you, grandma. Well, that's true. That's Mm -hmm. true. Right. So got any, any thoughts there? Well, you know, what what does Marie Kondo say? (laughs) (laughs) Just because someone gave it to you. But but also if you've had it for an extended period of time, you know, you've given it, you've given it its day in the spotlight. Maybe it's time to change things up a little. I'm just saying. Or maybe you move that to a different place. It's not on your piano. The other thing is, too, like sometimes, and this is really awful. Let me just be really awful, awful. Oh, good. I'm glad you're doing it. Okay. Sometimes the pictures in the frames, too, date the whole decor. I I just, okay. (laughs) Truth be told. There was a house that I love around the corner and there was an open house, which to me means come on in and poke around and see if you get some decorating (laughs) ideas. So in I went on Sunday and I looked around and oddly enough, because most real estate agents have you take away all your personal things and see that does personal things don't really bother me at all. I kind of like that. Like I'm clearly the odd bird out when it comes to real estate. (laughs) Yeah, I am definitely a little strange. With I'm like, no, the dirtier, the uglier, you know, give it to me. I'm like the Statue of Liberty of real estate. Like, bring it to me, everybody. I don't care. I'll take care of it. But these people had giant pictures of themselves skiing and doing all these sporty activities. Oh, wow. But all the pictures almost look like they were kind of like ads from the early 80s. It just So they were all professionally it. taken. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. uh, but they were in like these ski outfits that mm-hmm. you were like, oh, that's 1982 kind of ski outfit or whatever. It just made it, it made the entire space feel dated. Well, as a portrait photographer, I have tons of portraits of my girls that I took yeah. when they were little. And I think I've taken all of them down because I felt like I'm not getting rid of the pictures. These are pictures of my girls. I love them. They're special for me. And if you want to keep up, portraits like that. I think that's fine. But for me, I felt like there were too many Mm -hmm. and I felt like it did kind of have a, a just not a up-to-date look. Uh, So I, I took most of those down. Yeah. Now we realized this could be a controversial topic. I did not throw the photos out. I still have them. I saved them. Right. And as you said, and really what I started out was very innocent. It's just your picture frames. <laughs> right. So well, think about and the picture frames. But here's the picture. thing with those frames. 
is, and I do this with other things too, is you, you can have a little box that you put these sort of things in and you can put them there for like a year or perhaps it's two or three months. If nobody notices after a couple of months, I say you can ditch it. <laughs> if they don't know, if they don't notice, then you can, you know, I don't know. I may uh, or may not have done that with the marginal or just, stuffed animals if that you have really friend, wanted, but we had. Mm-hmm. I'm, I just know a friend of mine, when we had some sentimental things here that were just too much, she said, I'm going to take this off your hands for you. I don't know what, what she did friend. with it. But then I could honestly say, I don't know what happened. She took those out to the woods for you. <laughs> They've been set free. Okay. They're well, on a farm now. Right, right. They're being taken care of <laughs> on a farm with other mismatched frames, and they're all happy together. Yes. Uh, but, you know, we're not mean, and you know it. But just think about that. Okay. So let's move on to the next one okay. lampshades. Okay. Lampshades just, you know, they're very, they're functional, obviously, right? Everybody, you need a lampshade if you have a lamp. But sometimes the lampshade has overstayed its welcome. It could be, if it was a white, it could be yellowing. It can be dusty. It can even, you know, they're pretty fragile. It could even get dented. And they dated. Sometimes they're really dated looking. And sometimes they're dated looking. Yes. Yeah. And that can really, again, date your whole decor. Because you can't, I mean, even though you might not notice them because you're, they're your lampshades and you've seen them every day. They're, you know, that. They're kind of big, you know, they're, they're definitely going to make some sort of impression on your overall look. So this is taking the blinders off. Go look at your lampshades. There are a lot of cooler lampshades out there now. Well, the thing I love about this is some of these lamps were a lot of times people spend money on their lamps, but the beauty of it is often the lamp is not what needs to be replaced, simply the lampshade. And nine times out of 10, changing out the lampshade is much cheaper cheaper than changing out the entire lamp. So it's such a beautiful way to refresh a lamp. And you and I both love vintage lamps. And I always change out the lampshades because they're always dated. Oddly enough, I think that's why the people sell them because they look dated. And I don't think it occurred to them, oh, I can just change the lampshade. And yes, there you go. because they think of it as one unit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we don't. Because see, we don't, and neither do you. Mm-mm, exactly. Silk lampshades. Now they may have been expensive in their day. They may still look pretty good. You know, they've been dusted and cared for, and not faded or anything like that. But still, silk lampshades. You know the you, you're picturing the one I'm talking about. Mm, you know, I'm in not your head, everybody exactly can which... see that lampshade. That is a very dated look. So even if you decided not to to get rid of them. You could put them with the frames in the garage for a little while oh. and see what happens. No, because maybe, you know, someday you'll be like, oh, wow, you know, I really want to bring back those. I'm picturing like the ones that have like, and they would have that braided cording, like running down oh. the spine of them. Like those are old fashioned looking. I love those. I love wicker ones. I love burlap shades. I love drum shades. I, you know, I'm loving all of them for now. And that really changes up your look, even if it's a seasonal thing. You could change out your lampshades. Mm-hmm. We've touched on this one before, but I think this one deserves a second look. And that is those faux plants that are, that don't look real. And, or, or, or it's one point they did, and then they, they just got dusty and they weren't, maybe weren't cared for right. Yeah. Or a little squanched. Yeah. So faux plants, faux flowers, but if they don't look real, you know, or they're just, again, some, maybe you're just sick of them, but some of those, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, listen to our faux uh, flower and plant episode. Take a look at my YouTube. You can see some examples of really well done. Right. uh, I'm not saying don't have the faux, but just be careful about the ones you choose. Yeah. No, I'm definitely pro Mm -hmm. faux now. I've Mm -hmm. I've changed my mind. Um, unhealthy real plants too yeah you know at some point you might just give up the fight you know sometimes a plant is just not going to be happy where you have it and if you've you know maybe if you overwatered it once that's fine you can usually bring it back try that uh, stuff i told you guys about thrive i can put that in the show notes too it's a little um liquid food for your indoor plants try that but if it's been like six months 
and it's just not looking great. Again, that's just a downer on your decor and also kind of depressing. Like who wants to look at an event like that? Oh, or no. plants that like the pythos and things that grow really long and people let their uh, sort of it, tentacles is not the right word, but you know, like the, they let it vine too long. And so then it's just all sort of stretched out and there's no leggy. Yeah. Leggy. Too leggy. Yeah. Leggy. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Just clip them. I you know, like you might feel, Oh, I don't want to clip them. It looks so healthy. If you twirl them all around, it's like a, it's like a man doing like the dewlap wrap. Like, no, like the comb over. Don't do the comb over on your plants. <laughs> right. Just cut them. And then when you cut them, they will naturally get fuller again because they want to grow. Yes. If they're happy, they're going to want to grow and then just keep clipping them. And if you clip them, they're like, oh, finally they catch on. They're like, oh, she doesn't want me to get longer. She wants me to get fuller. Got it. And then they'll, you'll have a nice fuller plant that, rather than this draggy leggy thing. Yeah, we dropped a door on a plant of ours when we were first married and we just thought, well, mm. that's not so good. But it actually just cut it back. We cut it back and it was the healthiest plant for a long time. <laughs> so it it's was a like, unique oh, you actually pruning method. It was. <laughs> you, you remove a door from the interior and then you drop it on your plants. I know we weren't the most careful. What can I say? Uh, what about, think about your tables we usually have a table runner or tablecloth or placemats on our table. And that's such a simple, fun way to change those out. You can just change them out probably with something you have in your house. I do not limit just tablecloths and placemats. Mm -hmm. I don't just use those things on my table. I kind of have opened up my mind to other things that can act as a tablecloth. So I sometimes use throws Uh, For a tablecloth, I have used the Turkish towels, and you can even use a clean small rug that's very thin. Um, Wow. Yes, a tapestry. There are a beautiful, I used to buy fabric remnants and then sew the edges over so that you don't see those, hem them, and I use those for tablecloths all the time. Usually they're inexpensive because it's just a remnant. And depending on the width of your table, I had an especially wide table. So the 54 inch was not wide enough, but most tables these days are narrow enough that you wouldn't have to add any fabric. Cause I used to have to add fabric on the ends, but I don't have to Mm -hmm. do that anymore. Yeah. And I don't even, I mean, obviously a runner, you don't want it to be short on either end. That looks weird. But if you're doing like a square piece in the center and even kind of get like you ruche it up a little bit, if you've got something, I think that looks pretty. I don't think you need, you don't need to have a full on tablecloth that's covering every bit of the wood. Right. Well, that's what I do. Actually, it usually the tablecloths are not big enough for me to go the length of the table. I actually right. turn them the other way so that you see this of each of my table. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, either that's end a of the refresh. Table. I think that's mm-hmm. a fresh look. Right. Yeah. But so, you know, just kind of change out that fabric, put some, change out the cushions at your chairs at the table, put some pillows in the chairs. There's so many fun things you can do. You can put a, a grain sack in the center and use that as a table runner. Oh yeah. I love those grain sacks. I don't, I'm never going to stop loving those. I have quite <laughs> I a know stack. It. I know. I, I just know. know I'm never going to stop loving them. And they're harder and harder to find. I don't know if you've noticed that. Oh, I know. That's why, you know, I can't believe I shared my source in the last episode, but um, okay. Here's one, you know, and take it as you will, everyone. It's just a suggestion. If you want to, if you got your blinders off and you're looking around, maybe you want to move away from those earth tones a little bit, you know, maybe they just you... came in. Well, no, <laughs> no. If you haven't done like something like, yeah, but let's just stop there. Nothing comes back the same way it was. Okay. I'm trying to gently say, if you're still in Tuscany, it's tough. Oh, Tuscany. Right. Yeah. Because even if you're like, hey, look, these colors are coming back. They're not coming back the same way you did them. Okay. Fair enough. Don't you think? Uh, I think that is correct. But <laughs> my caveat is, well. And, and if you don't think it's correct, you can email Kelly at my soulful. 
<laughs> no, no, no. I just, I just hesitate a little bit when we, when we say stuff like that, just because we do encourage people to have their own personal color palettes. So if the red and the yellow is just your colors and oh. that is just who you are, then, then I am not going to be the one to say, get rid of it. But if you just did it cause you were, cause the Tuscany thing was hot. 10 years ago, then yeah, it's probably time to move on. But if that's your signature look, keep it. For sure, Z, need a jean. That okay. is our motto. Okay. I'm saying if someone is, had now removed their blinders to seeing what was actually in their home and they're like, Ugh, oh, right, right. Then here's yes. a way to do it. Oh. But if you're like, I love this, this is me, awesome. Right, right, right. And this is really more so about kind of looking at what you're in your home with fresh eyes and not so much to, is this hot right now or not, but is this still feeling fresh for me? And I think we do buy things sometimes and then don't, we love it when we buy it. And then we don't think about it again for 20 years. And then suddenly we look around and realize, oh my goodness, I bought that because it was trendy 10 years ago and it's no longer trendy and I no longer like it. Then if that's the case, move it on out the door. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Excited? Some people get excited about this. Some people get upset about it. Some people that it's cost for... Um, consternation only if if you feel like you want this type of refresh consider painting your stained wood cabinets okay i said it oh (laughs) okay you know i got in trouble for saying i wanted to paint my stained cabinets and calling them dated you did i did because somebody said but those look like mine so basically Uh, i was I, I just like, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm talking about mine <laughs> and I'm talking about me in my house. I know. 
<laughs> this has nothing to do with you. Well, you can, if you love it, we mm-hmm. love that you love mm-hmm. it and we support you with the love. Right, 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 right. But hey, we don't have to talk about it anymore, but you might want to consider it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I think it's something to think about. But again, it's personal preference. And if you were hiring it done, if you're having your cabinets refaced, it's not a cheap thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's going to be something that you'll have to work into your budget probably. Right. Or uh, you could do like many of our listeners and readers have done, and you can do it yourself. Uh, particularly Ann Anderson comes to mind. She's in a listener and then she became a blogger because she was in, inspired in part by, you know, seeing what Anita and I had done. So that's so awesome. And now she's become a friend and she listened to the podcast and painted her cabinets. I believe was when her daughter first went away to school because she was so sad and she was keeping her busy. And now she has these gorgeous cabinets and a beautiful blog. So everybody oh. can visit Ann Anderson and see her Kitchen cabin is painted, uh, DIY style. Yeah. Another idea I love because there are so many people that don't like their sofas, but it's another one of those things that can be an expense. And the other option for replacing it, if you're tired of looking at it, is to get a really cool throw. And I don't mean a small throw. I mean a really large throw. Something probably more on the size of a bedspread. Mm-hmm. and drape that over your sofa. I think I've seen it done so many times in these older homes and the, a lot of English homes. Mm-hmm. And it's just a beautiful look. It's kind of a slouchy, comfy look, mm-hmm. but it's one that really is charming that I'm very drawn to. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that look is really appealing too. I get the whole, you know, like you're in this estate home for the weekend and kind of feeling thing. Mm-hmm. So, but um In my mind, I'm wondering, so does the coverage go over the arms in your scenario or does it just go over the back cushions and the seats? No, I think it's just going to go over the back and the seats. I think once you get start extending it to the arms, it's going to start looking very messy. So I wouldn't do that. This is what I must live with with my doggies because I don't want my three friends on my sofa. And that's where they like to look out the window. Well, you could easily just do something just across the seat cushions. You may not even need anything along the back. No, no, no. They like to sit on the back and look out the window. Oh, yeah. And then sometimes they lay on the cushions. And then sometimes... Are they they on the arms? Oh, yeah. Sometimes they're on the arms. Okay. Well, here's your... Okay. So here's here's actually... I know. I probably shouldn't even say this. Oh, my goodness. It makes me sound so weird. I actually have a cotton rug draped mm-hmm. across the back of uh, my sofa is slip covered. Right. But I have a cream, a white or cream and blue striped cotton rug draped over the back, kind of like a throw. Then I have uh, pillows. And then I have two throws over each arm just because we have a lot of throws mm-hmm. that are kind of the same color as the slip cover. So you can do throws over the arms, just kind of make it the same color as your sofa. And I don't think people will even, it won't be so obvious. Yeah, that's what I do. I have a big gray blanket of sorts and then a throw on the other side because I, I need to find something or make something that fits, that uh, covers the whole thing. Well, just uh, make it, yeah. And if you make it something really pretty, then it, it looks like it's a it's meant as a decorative element right. rather than protective Yes, covering. exactly, exactly. But, uh, you know, I love my dogs and I, so I put up with it. But when they go grooming the first thing I do is take all that stuff off wash it and then I I put all my pillows out <laughs> I just, and then I, I can't come up with reasons to walk through the room for the several hours they're gone oh uh, and then you have to take the pillows off oh well I take the throw pillows off yeah oh wow yeah mm-hmm. that's okay you okay so that your doggies you know, yeah they're lovey um how about we talked about lamp shades, but what if you've got one of those chandeliers that, you know, it's not, it wasn't very expensive to start out with. Maybe it's silver, maybe it's gold, maybe it's whatever metal, maybe it's oil rubbed bronze, something like that. But you, you want it to be a different color, spray paint it, take it down and spray paint it. Um, and if you're worried about taking it down because uh, of the electricity and all that, if you don't feel comfortable doing that then you could hire someone to come if it was reasonable enough. If you don't want to even take it down, you know, just get one of those little pots of paint and get on a ladder and just maybe do an hour or so at a time, but you could do it while it's still hung. 
Oh yeah. I, while you got your spray paint in your hand, yeah, that stuff is good for so many things. Look around your room and see if there's something you're bored with. There's probably something that you could spray paint. Uh, or if it's furniture or something else, maybe something that you would use your paint brush on, but paint is such a great way to refresh so many things, decorative things. I've used paint on furniture lamps. I've used it even on the fabric on chairs. There's so many things that you can paint trays that maybe have gotten a little dated looking a lot of times a fresh coat of paint and they're good to go. So that's a great tool to have in your toolbox. Yeah. Yeah, and have it something stupid basic, but it gets me so excited. There's always the time for new towels. You know, it's not that often, but I just love to get all new towels. And then, you know, because we have dogs, I don't feel so bad because then they become dog towels or something like that. Or you can donate the towels to... I oh, did. Mm-hmm, to the to Humane a, Societies or something? I, well, yeah, there's a dog shelter around the corner from me. Yeah. And I have taken loads of old towels there and they love them because they need towels constantly. Constantly. Yes. Yes. And yeah, ours even takes pillows and stuff for the littler dogs. They make uh, like dog beds out of them and stuff like that. So uh, are the towels looking a little bit like maybe they'd be better suited to wash the car than, you know, dry you off. So the, all things like that, like that's just such a fun thing. To, I mean, it, it sounds maybe kind of ridiculous, but I think you all get it. Like just coming home from the store with a like, big bag full of new towels. I love that. Oh, <laughs> no, I did that recently. After the Marie Kondo thing, I got rid of all the tattered towels or the ones that were rough. And the thing is, I'd rather have four nice towels than 20 icky ones. So yeah. you probably don't need as many towels as you had. And this is more of a take the old ones out, put them in the dog pile. Right. And then just keep those really nice ones to use. Right. So you might and have to do exactly. laundry a little more often, but you're going to be so much happier. Right. And you'll have more space. Yeah. So here's a little different, uh, go moving from the bathroom and back to the living room, rearrange your coffee table. Mm, I'm so excited. Fun. You know, I've always had an Ottoman coffee table for a long time and I'm getting, I think I mentioned in a previous episode that I've ordered a real coffee table that has a tray top. Is it come yet? No, no, no. It's not here yet. I think it's on a I slow boat from somewhere. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I know I can't wait. The, the reason I'm so excited is, well, a couple of reasons. But the main thing is I've never gotten to, to uh, display things on my coffee table because it's an ottoman. Oh, you're and- going to be busy, man. I'm not going to be able to call you. You're going to be no, busy I'm, doing I, all exactly. this. Exactly. I'm going to be trying out new things. The good news is I probably won't need to buy anything. I think I have plenty of things. So I'll <laughs> just you're in good shape something. there. I'm in yeah. good shape, so I'll shift something over. But very excited. Oh, 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 oh. That was the other exciting thing. So at the farm, we have this rattan basket that's the coffee table now. It's a chest, like a trunk. It's, it's uh, I don't know, like two feet tall, and it's like the size of a steamer trunk but it's a wicker basket. So that is the coffee table there. So same problem. You can't put anything on it because it doesn't sit flat. I just bought at the thrift store, a ginormous tray, a black tray uh, for 20 bucks. Nice. So I'm going to put that on there and now I'm going to be able to put stuff on the coffee table. So you're going to put it right on top of that steamer trunk. Well, it's actually a wicker basket. I have a little tray on there now, but I can't fit much on it because it's, you know, really just big enough for like a plate. Right, right. So, yes, I'm very excited. I'm going to be able to arrange things on there, too. Uh, Forget it. I mean, my calls are going to go unanswered. You're going to be so busy (laughs) vignetting these two things. Do you have any more fabulous ideas? Uh, I I think that's I think that's good. I mean, I have more, but I I think I'm ready to move on to. to Are you going to withhold a few? You don't want to tell well, us? Well, I'm that? trying to think. I mean, I have hide cords. Oh, yeah. Hide cords. You know, make sure we have a whole episode on that. Yeah. Making sure your cords aren't showing. I think that'll give you a good refresh. And changing out those tea towels in your kitchen. How about that? Oh, yeah. The, yeah. The whole towel department. That's good, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oven mitts, that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Clean them yeah. out. Yeah. Good. I think that's right. it. I have a crush that I'm super excited about. I mean, oh, goodness. By the time you guys are listening to this, I will have actually tried it out for reals. So if there are any issues with it, I will let you know. But I bought myself a new uh, Roly carry-on for- You did? Yes. And guess what else I got? What? 
the bag you told everyone to get that goes which I haven't even gotten yet. The whole that goes over the handle. Yes. Okay. Looks so good together. Oh my goodness. Okay. Did you get the blue and white stripe or a different one? No, I didn't get that one. Let me tell you what I got. Okay. So I have had this red wheelie. Okay. Now I'm a small person. If you look at my driver's license, it says I'm 5'4", but that is a lie, or I was 5'4 <laughs> on a very good day. Okay, so I'm like 5'3"-ish, Was right? that when you had uh, some, maybe some Texas big hair going on I could years have. ago? <laughs> exactly. Uh, let, let, let me just tease this pit up here. Okay, now measure me. Um, okay, so pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt it didn't really impact me that much but, but okay the 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 handle part you know that extends on your wheelie luggage mm-hmm. somehow stopped extending all the way Oh. And then like one side would extend all the other way, but the other one wouldn't. So this was my favorite piece of luggage. And I just, it had the right amount of pockets. It was just great. Oh. And I was like, you know, just going to keep it. But then, you know, you'd be in the the, the airport and, you know, maybe well, you're going on this big trip. Peter <laughs> grabs it or whatever. And he's six oh, two yeah. and he's like, has to like get on his knees to pull it. Right? <laughs> and even me, cause it, you know, picture it when you're pulling that thing behind you, you know, it's a certain distance from your feet, but it would be so close to my feet and I'd kind of have to scratch down a little bit and it would be hitting me in the back of the heels, oh, which no, feels no, no, bad. You need, the, you need the spinners. Right. So I was like, okay, it's gotta be, I gotta get rid of this thing. But you're like, ah, I don't want to buy luggage. Like, oh, I'd rather buy st- stuff to go in the luggage right but anyway so i broke down because this piece of luggage is so good looking okay it's from mark and graham which i thought was a separate company but it's somehow all part of like william sonoma and pottery barn and the whole thing oh, i didn't know that yeah now they're sending me like oh. endless emails so oh, well 
beware there. You have to unsubscribe like 6,000 times, but this piece of luggage is worth it. It's called the Terminal One Carry On. And they, ha- it's my, I chose black. What a surprise, but I chose black, but it has the leather and they're probably vegan, you know, pleather. I'm sure they're probably not real leather because it was like $190. They call it PU leather now or something. I'm seeing it come as vegan, which I think is such oh, a good yes, spin vegan is on another that. Word. Yes, but yeah. anyway, so it looks like an old-fashioned type of suitcase, like with the leather straps that would buckle around it. Oh, I love that look. But it has also this sleek look to it, you know, because it has the silver, thing, and the, obviously the handle fully extends. Okay, so then I went, because Anita had told us all about this um, duffel tote. Mm -hmm, Which I haven't even gotten yet. Well, it has this great panel on the back that slides over the, uh, extendable handle on your travel bag. So I went on there to look at that and lo and behold, they had it in the black with the exact same color vegan pleather straps. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's not a set of Louis Vuitton luggage which i wouldn't want anyway oh my gosh oh, but i'm it just looking so at sharp okay i'm looking at what you're talking about it's good right these are so and you can get gorgeous. it monogrammed i didn't do that i don't you know I, but the mark and graham yeah oh my goodness terminal these one are, carry on i'll mm-hmm. put the link yeah i just bought some so i can't go buy anymore um but these <laughs> if i hadn't i would get these these are gorgeous right i just got the one but i mean if you needed bigger ones they have the, I well think i mean just matching. one yeah yeah one of these yeah they're gorgeous wow yeah but that strap is important i think i'm gonna have to get that before our next trip the thing where it sits on top of your other bag because otherwise your bag is just falling off oh all that the was time. such a smart thing i had never seen that yes yeah, so you want that sleeve yeah bag with that sleeve on the back okay, and the well, sleeve yeah. even has another po- a zipper pocket yeah so that's a great spot for your phone well i've kept the link i'm gonna go back and i'm still planning to get that Good. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So what's yours? Well, I have a friend that I met through my blog. She was a blog reader a long time ago, and we became friends. And her daughter, I knew she was a musician, but her daughter just got signed with Sony. Oh, my gosh. Who is it? I know. Well, her stage name, I mean, this is her name. It's Savannah Ray. Savannah Ray. And she just came out with a song, and it's called I Hate You. (laughs) Which sounds awful, but it's, I, I know it okay, sounds awful, but Savannah's got some things she's working through. Well, I think it's like, I love to hate something. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, yeah, it yeah. Just, yeah. But it's actually, it's quite good. I was really uh, just so thrilled that she's just so talented. And I think she's got a really great future ahead of her. I'll include a link uh, to her, the YouTube oh, of her song. But it's a great, she, I think she knocked it out of the park here. First song out with with sony it's fantastic and uh, you can get it on on apple itunes and i think she's got a great future ahead of her and i i had evie listen to it because evie's very into the music i said hey what do you think of this i was just very neutral about it i didn't want to act like you know i was excited hey it's my fan oh my god i know i was just like hey what do you think of this because i wanted an honest opinion she said Mm -hmm. oh she's good so is so it country-ish? Very, I mean, her name Well, is this one's a little kind of country-ish. Country. Yeah, I don't know if mm-hmm. all of her music's going to be country, but this one is. But okay. she is, yeah, I think they're from Texas. I think she's in Nashville now. But, oh, how um, exciting. But good for you, Savannah. You go, girl. Yeah, congratulations. We're, we're really proud of you. Yeah. Um, okay, so you can, like, I don't know, take a snooze or listen, because I think that you're not going to jump in on this question, but that's okay. Um, we had a listener write in and asking for sort of a quick garden design. She's planning on selling her house. And I didn't want this question to sit for too long because I Mm -hmm. think that she's, you know, really trying to get her house rolling. So what would be my top few tips for a quick garden design to add some curb appeal, um, you know, for anyone, but particularly if somebody's trying to sell their house, I have no idea uh, what, Elizabeth, her name is Elizabeth, Elizabeth B. I have no idea what Elizabeth's got going on there currently. So I'm just going to speak in very general terms. So when you're designing a garden, you're going to want to choose a limited number of plants. You don't want to go to the nursery and buy one of each plant that looks pretty to you. That's not a garden design. That's a nursery, right? You know, like that. So you should, like we always say, limit your color palette. You need to do that in the garden too. So I pick 
maybe three colors. You could also be monochromatic, which I'm doing the all white here, but normally people are going to have some color. So three colors and then maybe three to five different kinds of plants. Uh, and this, this is not going to include necessarily um, evergreens that are already currently there. Um, and then you're going to want to buy the plants. So say you choose yellow daylilies. So buy, depending on the size of your garden, buy three, five, or seven or more, but do it in odd numbers. And then you're going to want to, to sort of ribbon the various plants throughout the garden rather than a clump of this and a clump of that and a clump of something else. So, you know, again, caveat, this is very general terms, not specific to any space, you know, so it all really depends on how big and what kind of sun and all of that. Just in ger general terms, this is what you would do for your garden. Um, ribbon them through, and then you're going to want to pay attention to the size of the plants. So, you know, if you're doing a quick curb appeal for sale, you know, maybe you're not going to be there that long. It doesn't matter so much, but if you're going to be planting where things are going to stay in the ground for a while, obviously the taller plants are going to go in the back and then the medium size and then smaller sort of either ground cover or little annuals in the front. It looks very nice. And then you'll be able to appreciate everything. And pay attention to the textures of the leaves and whatnot. That can really be important, particularly if you're going to do a monochromatic garden. And then if it's just a kind of a quick fix, I'm not going to get into amending your soil and all that, which is super important. But if you just need to do something quickly to make it look good, get these uh, odd number amount of plants in your three colors get them in the ground and then apply mulch. Mulch makes everything sort of come together. It looks really nice and neat and tidy. Wow. Now, now you can add whatever you want. I didn't mean to say you couldn't just, I know that you're not as big a gardener as I am. No, no, no. I, I, uh, I think you nailed it. So that's, you know, that's a quickie quick. And also you could obviously add some containers and you may be by your door or something like that. So yeah, Elizabeth, good luck with the sale of your house. I hope that helps. You know, if you do put in a little garden quickly, step a picture and send it to us. We'd love to see. We always love pictures. Yes, it is really fun. It's, and we really uh, get to know you guys uh, through your photos. It's really fun to know. And then maybe you email us again and like, we know what your bedroom looks like. It's kind of weird and nice. <laughs> <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> well, this was so much fun. Thanks for hanging out with us today. I hope you got some really great tips and you're going to walk around your house with your eyes wide open and see what you may or may not want to refresh. Remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.